Fourth shot an OCW test for a friend of ours, uh, Jason's rifle. It's a 6XC Douglas barreled uh, Peterson brass cases, uh, CCI 200 primers. The bullet's the 115 DTAC. It is the pointed bullet. Um, and this is the H4350, Hodgson H4350 powder. Okay, uh, after three shots to get the thing in the box, uh, here was the first five shot group out of this brand new Douglas barrel. I guess shots three through eight. Yeah, shot quite well there. Uh, and then we begin the optimal charge weight test and you shoot this round robin. So you take one shot of 40 grains here, then one shot of 40.3 here, then one shot of 40.6 here, one shot of 40.9 here, and then one shot of 41.2 here. You're gonna let the gun cool off. Um, you know. I waited about 20 to 30 seconds in between shots, and then after I would finish one complete string, I'd give it about a minute. And then go back and do the next string. So then you come back through the second time with one shot of 40 grains, and then one shot of 40.3, one shot of 40.6, and here and here and so on. And you come through three times. You're shooting round robin. Why do you do that? To spread the effects of a heating and fouling barrel evenly across all of these charge weights. Uh, a statistician uh, got into riflery uh, by the name of Denton Bramwell. I remember he wrote that the OCW test is the most statistically significant way to develop a load because of this round robin uh, uh, firing sequence and i was very flattered to hear him say that all right what are we looking at when we're done very important you're going to be um, three percent apart with accuracy nodes and three percent apart with your scatter nodes that means at 1.5 percent away from either accuracy or scatter nodes you're going to the opposite end uh, of uh, well let me put it this way that doesn't look too good and we hope that it wouldn't now this is a long barrel here's something to keep in mind longer barrels their scatter nodes are going to be uglier yeah they, because there's more movement at the muzzle the if this were movement. like a 22 inch barrel likely this group here would be all shots touching and it'd be very difficult to actually discern where the center of the of the note is you still can right uh, definitely yeah but I, yeah the, the longer the barrel the more pronounced your scatter nodes are going to be so you do have one here now as you come away from the scatter node to 40.3 we start to tighten up you kind of notice this thing uh, this uh, scatter node almost uh, surrounds or brackets this this point of aim here point of impact here and then we step it up another three tenths and and we're even tighter now i want you to notice this this shot is not a pull. This wasn't a shooter-induced pull. Um, had a guy on a forum, not on a forum, on my own YouTube channel, you know, going, uh, you need a better trigger puller. You need a better trigger puller. I got a feeling he pulls his, this pinky <laughs> forum boss. But <laughs> anyway, this bullet that struck here was one bullet that would, that, that in the scatter node, it, this one here acted exactly like that. These holes would be cutting. So at 40 grains, you hit the scatter node. At 43, you're not far enough away from the scatter node to, to get this shot back this way. So we wouldn't use 40.3. By the time we get to 40.6, this is looking pretty nice, pretty tight. Another thing to realize, and I know the train engineer hat guy doesn't believe this, but there's people that's been in the business a lot longer than he has. Um, that do understand this. There are two types of dispersion. There is angular dispersion, then that never gets any better. Then there is what we call spiral dispersion. This was identified more than a hundred years ago. A wobbling bullet circles the path it would be on if it were not wobbling. So, you know, these long skinny 115s, you may not even see this tight at um, 100. Fortunately, we did in this case. Uh, we took some of these down range and they just man, stacked. stacked like cordwood really tight even on the scatter nodes they were yeah even good. the scatter nodes and that's one thing that you can say about the 6xc also the 6 dasher would be in that category and the 6547 finding a bad load for them is difficult but you can find loads that are better than others that's right so let's say we're at a scatter node at 40 grains generally a 40 grain area then the three percent rule means you're going to be on another scatter node at about 41 1. Yep. What do we got? Right in between We're these not two charges. So right here, the 41 1 is just right in between here. And um, 
neither of these are grouping well we are glad to see that we're not miffed to see that we're happy about it because that makes us even more certain that the optimal charge weight for a 6xc and peterson brass cci 200s 115 dtac h4350 is 40.5 grains uh, that's what uh, our client or our friend i should say is going to load i trust um, now look one last thing so many people do this chronograph driven load development it's a plague it, it, it's like the roni virus in, in, in a way i mean you just keep believing things that are not true just because somebody with a spinner in their ball cap told you so you can have very very tight velocity numbers here at 40 grains very tight you could have an extreme spread of five feet per second at 40 grains that's got nothing to do with where your accuracy note is folks please please learn this i mean it, it, it doesn't seem to be settling in with so many they keep on shooting across chronographs look at these numbers uh you could you could you could shoot a super tight extreme spread at 40 grains or right that... and it's also true that this load here the ocw you might have a 10 foot a second extreme spread here which is still very good but then you throw this out because you had a tighter extreme spread with a worse load yeah you went for the wrong group just because your, your chronograph led you astray. Uh, you can tighten chronograph numbers on the OCW by slight seating depth adjustment. Also tune your primer you know, yeah, stuff, you, you try different that. primers. But anyway, in this case, we're gonna wrap this video up. 40 and a half grains with this particular combination is where to be. And uh, that'll be a wrap for now. Thank you for watching.